Welcome to United Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor John. It's great to have you joining us today for our worship on this October 18th. We begin our service with our call to worship and our confession of faith. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Because you, God, made the world and intended it to be a good place, and called its people your children, because when things seemed at their worst, you came in Christ to bring out the best in us. So, gracious God, we gladly say, goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than hate, light is stronger than darkness, truth is stronger than lies. Because confusion can reign inside us, despite our faith, because anger, tension, and bitterness, and envy distort our vision. Because our minds sometimes worry small things out of all proportion. Because we do not always get it right. We want to believe that goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Truth is stronger than lies. Because you have promised to hear us and are able to change us, and are willing to make our hearts your home, we ask you to confront, control, forgive, and encourage us as you know best. We proclaim that goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than hate, light is stronger than darkness, truth is stronger than lies. Lord, hear our prayers and change our lives until we illustrate the grace of the God who makes all things new. Amen. Let us pray together our prayer of the day for October 18th. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The readings for today, the first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 45. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him, and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun from the west, there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Here ends the first reading. The Holy Gospel today is according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to Jesus, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us, then, what you think. 
Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, peace, and mercy to you all from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Unless you've been asleep this past year, you all know that there's an election in about two and a half weeks. We're being bombarded with yard signs, TV commercials, unsolicited text messages, phone calls, and the list just goes on and on and on. This particular election cycle has caused and will cause even more conflict between friends, family, and even in the church. While most of us have already probably committed ourselves to a particular party or candidate, and some of us may have already voted already, I think it's important that we ask ourselves this question. Is my vote, is my allegiance to a particular party or candidate in line with my Christian faith and the teachings of Jesus Christ? Now, before you answer this question, we need to hear once again what Jesus says in today's story from Matthew. Jesus is asked a trick question. The Herodians and the disciples of the Pharisees ask this question with the hope that Jesus will answer it in such a way that will get Jesus into trouble. And the question is this, is it lawful to pay taxes or not? These disciples of the Pharisee and the Herodians ask this question because they know that if Jesus says it is lawful to pay taxes, then those people who have been following Jesus, hoping that Jesus was the Messiah that would free them from Rome, they would then leave him, thinking that he is taking sides of the Romans. Those who wanted freedom from the Roman Empire and occupation would go away from him. They would see Jesus now as a traitor to the cause of independence and freedom. Because if you're really against Roman occupation, how could you ever say it's okay to pay them taxes? But on the other hand, if Jesus says, no, it's not lawful to pay taxes, then the Roman authorities could haul him in for sedition, for speaking out against Rome. But thankfully, Jesus is a very smart man. Jesus sees what they are trying to do. So Jesus answers them by saying, Give to the emperor what is the emperor's, and give to God what belongs to God. The way that Jesus answers them is really a reframing of the original question. Jesus knew the question that they posed to him was not really about paying taxes at all. The original question was really about where is one's loyalty and allegiance? Is one's allegiance and loyalty to Rome? Or is one's allegiance and loyalty to God? But before Jesus answers the question, he asks them to see a coin a coin that's used to pay the taxes, the denarius. And then, in front of everybody gathered around, he points out for all to see and hear that on this coin, on the money that is used to pay these taxes, there is a picture, an image of the emperor. And the emperor in Rome was understood by the Romans to be a god-like figure. The emperor was divine and holy. Eugene Boring, a theologian and biblical scholar, noted that the coin used for these taxes, the very coin that Jesus is holding in his hand, had the words inscribed in it, Tiberius Caesar, August, 
son of the divine Augustus, high priest. On this coin, there was the claim that Caesar was a god. Now Jesus' response to give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God acknowledges that there are two different authorities at work within the world. There's the civil authorities, and then there's God's authority. And we humans, well, we can get these two authorities all mixed up from time to time by thinking or saying that the government and its leaders are godlike. When we ascribe a godlike status to any particular party or candidate or politician, it's, it's not only that it's idolatry, but we also run the risk of believing that anything that that politician does or says is always good and right, and we may even say that it's divinely inspired. When we believe that a politician or a political party is godlike, we run the risk of blindly following them because we may think that they can do no wrong. And this can also lead us to declare the other side, the other politician, or the other political party, we may declare them as evil. There have been in times in history where a politician or parties are in fact evil in every sense of the word. We think right away about Hitler and the Nazis. We think about Saddam Hussein and the Ba'ath Party. In those instances, the people needed to speak out and declare what evil was, that their reign was evil. But not every politician and political party is evil, even if you disagree with them. Now, the Augsburg Confession, one of our primary confessional documents within the Lutheran Church, spells out what we Lutherans are to believe when it comes to giving Caesar what is Caesar's and God what is God's. In Article 16, we hear these words. Christians are obliged to be subject to civil authority and to obey its commands and laws in all that we can do without sin. But when commands of the civil authority cannot be obeyed without sin, we must obey God rather than men. In other words, it's okay as Christians to follow the laws, the rules of the government, but when the government requires its citizens to engage in or approve of sinful actions, then the Christian has an obligation to follow God rather than the humans. And this is exactly, I think, what Jesus said to those who were trying to trick him. Give to the government what belongs to the government, but give to God what belongs to God. Politicians and political parties are really human constructs. They're made up of human beings. And as we know, all humans are sinful by nature. No politician, no political party, no political theory is perfect or without error. Only God's will, only God's kingdom, and only God's Son are perfect and without error. Our ultimate faith and trust as Christians is to be in God and God alone. Not a nation state, not a politician, or a political party. When Jesus says, give to God what is God's, I think we oftentimes forget that everything already belongs to God, including ourselves. As Christians, we are called to participate and be active in civic engagement. We ought to go out and vote. We ought to go out and voice our opinions. We ought to pay our taxes and follow the laws of the land. When we engage, when we go out to vote, when we speak our minds, we need to do all of this firmly grounded in our Christian faith. And when we are grounded in our faith and follow God's will above all others, then we can give to Caesar what is Caesar's and at the same time give to God what is God's? But too often, 
we confuse what politicians say with what God says? How often have we listened to politicians while ignoring God's will? We seem to place more trust in politicians these days than we do in God and God's word. We allow politicians to tell us how to interpret God's will instead of hearing God's will directly from Scripture and from our faith leaders. Throughout the Bible, we hear over and over again God's call to care for the poor, to welcome the stranger, to love our enemies, to heal the sick, to care for and protect the earth and all of God's creation. It's interesting to note that about 10 verses after today's gospel story, Jesus is asked, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus answers, to love God with all of your heart and your mind and your soul. But then Jesus adds on to this. Second to that is to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus equates loving God with loving our neighbor. The gospel message, the good news of Jesus Christ, is all about love and forgiveness, compassion and mercy. It's about treating all of God's creatures with respect and with dignity, no matter who they are. It's also about welcoming in those who are different than us. It's about building bridges between one another so that we can all work to bring about God's kingdom here and now. The gospel message of Jesus is about seeking peace between peoples and between nations. The gospel of Jesus Christ is about sharing all that God has given to us with each other so that all may enjoy the gifts of God's creation. I've heard people say that this gospel message of Jesus Christ, the message of loving others, caring for the poor, caring for creation, showing compassion and mercy, feeding the hungry, well, it's all well and good, but we really can't do it here on earth. They say it looks good on paper, written in the Bible, preached from the pulpits, but the reality is it can never happen, right? And yet, each and every week, we as the church, as people of faith, pray these words, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Some claim that we need to maintain a strict separation of church and state, to which I agree 110%. No government anywhere ought to tell its citizens who and how they worship. No government ought to tell its citizens that they have to follow certain rules, laws, and doctrines and teachings of a particular religion. If I want to be a Lutheran Christian and worship Jesus, then I should be able to do that freely. If a Muslim wants to worship Allah and, and to follow the Prophet Muhammad, they should be able to freely do that as they please. And if someone chooses not to worship a deity or to follow any religion or doctrine, they too shall be free to do that as they please. That is what the separation of church and state is all about. It's a part of our U.S. Constitution, and for good reason. But the separation of church and state is not, is not a separation of faith and politics. Because our faith ought to inform our political beliefs and views and the way we vote. When we vote as Christians, I believe that our Christian faith and identity can help us in making our decisions at the ballot box. When we vote, are we thinking of God's unconditional love for us and for all others? When we vote, are we thinking of God's compassion and mercy that he has given to us and to all? When we vote, are we thinking of the teachings and ministries of Jesus Christ? How he healed the sick, raised the dead, welcomed those who were cast out of society? Do we think about how Jesus fed the hungry, clothed the naked, and willingly died for us and for all of creation? 
I believe when we do this, when we think about God's love, when we think about what Jesus has done for us, we will then fulfill Jesus' command to give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to give God what belongs to God. It's true that no single politician can ever fully represent our Christian ideals. Politicians are mortals, just like you and just like me. So this is where we need to ask, which person, which party, which candidate is most in line with our Christian beliefs and with the gospel message of Jesus Christ? We need to dig deep into Holy Scripture and into prayer to truly understand this. And not just rely on the words of politicians who simply want your vote. The good news for us is that it is God and God alone who has the power to raise the dead. It is God and God alone who has the power to forgive our sins. It is God and God alone who loves us unconditionally. No one else can. It is through the life and death and resurrection of God's only Son, Jesus Christ, in which we receive the promise of eternal life. So I encourage us all to engage in our civic duty and our right to vote. To give to Caesar what is Caesar's. I also encourage us all to think about how our faith in Jesus Christ informs us in terms of politics and the policies that are put in place by those with whom we elect. Do they help us to give God what belongs to God? Do they honor our faith and the faiths of others? Do they help bring about God's will and kingdom here on earth? So let us, in the next couple of weeks as we run up to our election, let us all pray from the depths of our hearts for all of our elected officials and for all those who are running for office, that God's Holy Spirit would lead them and guide them and help us to see and live more fully into God's kingdom here on earth. Amen. walking by or the birds and the animals in the trees. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, 
God's only Son, the, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. Gracious God, you call us by name and invite us to share your good news. Send your Holy Spirit among preachers, missionaries, and evangelists. We give you thanks for the witness of your servant Luke, the evangelist, whom the church commemorates today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of praise, the heavens and all creation declare your salvation. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the whole universe show forth your goodness. Raise up devoted stewards of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, may your word of justice sound forth in every place. Restore divided nations and communities with reconciling truth. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of light, we pray for those who are living with pain, illness, isolation, grief, anger, or doubt. We especially pray for the Shaw family, Blaine, Carol, Alex, Lynn, Betty, Bob, Doris, Cy, Benny, join their voices in a new song, assuring them that you call them each by name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of truth, you show no partiality. May your spirit guide the work of justices, magistrates, court officials, and all vocations of the law, that your promise of restoration may be known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country as we enter into this election. Send your peace and wisdom on all. We pray for all our elected officials and for those who are running for office. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, you raised Jesus from the dead, so raise up those who have died in you. We also offer up prayers for an end to the coronavirus, that doctors and nurses and scientists can find a cure that will save us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray with the words our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing. Guard the good treasure entrusted into you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. May Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you with grace, mercy, and peace, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, live in love, as Christ loved us. Thanks be to God.